if you're thinking about learning art or thinking about building a career in art, it can be a little bit of a worry with the degree of artificial intelligence and automation that is on the horizon that looks like it's going to make it possible for computers to create things, to be artists, essentially. What I want to talk about in this video is if you still want to be an artist in the sort of era of artificial intelligence and advanced automation, what do you do to build a career that is going to be able to survive this onslaught of technological innovation? How do you make an AI proof career? Let's discuss in this video. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years in a sea of technological disruption and change. And these changes have uprooted and modified and completely destroyed many of the industries that I've been a part of. Although it seems that people still want to believe that the AI revolution is going to be something completely new and different that hasn't been seen before. We'll see. In this video, again, I want to discuss some good strategies for just how to build a good career in general. Now, if you want to learn how to create art in more of a time-honored traditional method, even though it's digital, you can take my line and color quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running, creating art quickly in the line and color style in Photoshop. I go from the thumbnail to the finished image and I give you all of the brushes and PSDs that I tend to use day to day as a working artist. Even though it's digital, my process is the same that people have been using for, you know, hundreds of years in the line and color style. And I still think it's very effective to this day. This guide is free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out. The first thing and probably the most important thing to understand about building an art career is that art and money are different and they've always been different. This is such a simple concept but it's one that really changed my entire thinking as soon as I really got my head around it and it's something I try and get across to all the students that I interact with and mentor. So what does this mean? Well it sort of means that if you're talking about a career, again a career or getting jobs, getting paid for your work, which is what most people are worried about here, is more to do with how markets function and the basic economic principles than it is about whether or not you can create good art or not, or whether or not your art is good versus a sort of AI generated art. Now, if you just want to create art, then you should be creating art primarily for yourself and, you know, just because it makes you happy. If you want to make money doing art, then again, what you should be concerned about is how one makes money and specifically how one makes money with art. This is an abstract concept and I do apologize for that, but let me give you an example. A lot of people are really viewing the sort of job opportunities that you might get with your art as this situation where you just get a job and your goal is to get a folio together that is of a certain quality and you go and someone says you, uh, you are the chosen one, I give you a job and then you have a job where you do art. And that's a very sort of simplistic view of how one makes money with art. Again, you have to understand why that person is employing you, what skills you're going to provide, how you're going to create a product, what the economics are going to look like in that scenario. What is the actual you know, value that you provide, right? Is it the art? Is it the way that you create the art? Is it the process involved there? Um, again, there's many, many other factors. And I think often what people are thinking about when they say, oh, you know, AI art is going to destroy everything is they're not understanding the actual economic factors at play necessarily. And what you have to do is look at the larger picture to properly understand how money is actually going to function. What I would recommend that you do is, again, understand the basic principles of economics and how markets function to get a broader spectrum understanding of, you know, where job opportunities are likely to come from. 
in the future, it's not always just going to be about getting a job and having a job forever. It really hasn't been about that since the 50s. You don't get a job, work for till you're 65, get a golden watch, and then sail off into the sunset, right? That idea has not been true for a long time, and it's almost absurd that people are considering it in that way. Again, I've been a freelancer for you know a huge amount of my career, and the way I view work and everything is completely different to that. So don't view it as if you are just a sort of producer, right? You're just a production artist in the middle and you're just sort of looking for a job desperately anywhere. It's more complicated than that. It's always been more complicated than that. And there have been a lot of really good times when you can just kind of, again, look for jobs and there's lots of jobs around and, you know, you just kind of blindly stumble into something and then someone's paying you money. If you don't understand the economics at play, then it's going to be very, very tricky to sort of navigate a lot of these uh, sort of tricky things that are going to come up in terms of, you know, what jobs are going to be available? What's it going to look like in the future? So the first thing that I'd say is understand basic economic principles and how markets function. So what does this mean? Well, It really means that we need to separate the idea of us building skills as artists that we can carry on and improve throughout our career. If you're looking to be an artist, then again, the skills that you build, the foundation, your knowledge, your craft is one thing. And you can make that better and better and better. Now, the correlation that that skill set and that better skill set and whatever you're imagining has to you getting paid is zero. You have to work on the money side of it and how you're actually going to sell that in a marketplace if you want to get paid for doing that art. As I said, I know a lot of good artists who don't get paid much, and I know a lot of sort of average artists who get paid a lot. There's not a huge amount of correlation. You just need to get to a certain point and you need to work on both of these skills. Ideally for you, I would suggest getting good at both. But if you're looking at this from the model of there are monolithic corporations and I'm an artist looking to get a job and this monolithic corporation is likely to replace that sort of worker position that I was going to fill um, you know, with an artificial version of me and therefore I don't get a job, then I think, again, you're looking at things from a very, very, very simplistic manner. And I think that that's really just not how this is going to work. But more than that, it's important to understand that you are the artist. Your skill set and your art stays the same. The way that you sort of monetize or, again, build a career out of that is something that has and will change over time. And that's fine. What we have to look at is, again, how is that going to change And how are we likely to be able to adapt to that change? I can give you a couple of examples to just underline this point if you're a little bit on the fence. The first is that you can take my skill set. So I have a specific skill set. I can draw certain things. I have a certain level of craft. Now, I have the ability to sell that skill set into the marketplace. And this is where, again, understanding basic economics and what is valuable, what is scarce, what is rare, where is the value in the marketplace? Who's going to pay more or less for my skill set? Now, I can tell you for a fact that in most cases, if I sell my skill set to the comic book industry, I'll probably make a quarter of what I can make if I sell that same skill set to the concept art entertainment industry. And that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, I am me. I have a certain amount of worth. I can do this. People should pay me this. No, that's just not how reality works. It's never worked that way. It's about who is paying me the money, what they value, and what I can do to help them out. There's another one, another person over there who would love to pay me to help them out, but they've only got, you know, a tenth or a quarter of what this other person wants. Which one am I going to pick, right? Again, you know, that's a multifaceted analysis. There's a lot of variables, but if you're after the money, then it's just a matter of making that decision effectively. Now, will that change with AI? Maybe. Who knows? But at its core, understand that, again, if you take me as an example, I have a core skill set, and the way that I make money out of that is completely unrelated and uncorrelated, as far as I'm concerned, from how much money is available to me um, as opportunity in the marketplace.
If we look at how technological change has affected markets in the past, you can look at a few good examples. One would be that in the sort of golden age of illustration, this is back, you know, before photography, you would have magazines and every image in the magazine was drawn by illustrators. And this was a situation where there was a giant marketplace, right? You imagine you're an artist, you're in the 50s, and you've gone to a school and they sort of teach you how to do art. And a big part of that art is just like, how do you draw and paint like a, you know, like a, you know, bottle of toothpaste, right? And a thing of toothpaste with, you know, toothbrush with some toothpaste on it. And then someone's going to be like, buy my toothpaste, right? There's, they, the, the people making that ad need a picture of toothpaste, right? They'll pay you for it. They can't take a photo of it because cameras don't really exist and work that well back then. Um, so there's this giant market for just drawing all sorts of junk. Everything needs to be drawn. Everything in the paper, everything in magazines, everything in catalogs needs to be illustrated by people by hand. And, um, you know, that meant there was a gigantic amount of work for everyone. Now, as soon as photography came along, that basically disappeared overnight. Very similar kind of paradigm shift that you might see or people are worried about with concepts like 3D art or artificial intelligence um, sort of designed art. What it means is the skill that you had, right, is now no longer valued as much in the marketplace. So you probably saw a lot of people instantly sort of go out of business because they were just sitting there illustrating, you know, packets of chips and packets of toothpaste and, you know, soap commercials and all these things that, you know, didn't require a lot of creativity. They were just good production level jobs. And all of a sudden, boom, they're all gone forever. They never, ever, ever came back. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no jobs for illustrators. What became sort of useful were illustrating things that couldn't be photographed. So, for instance, you then would have a lot of great science fiction illustrators um, come up, you know, because, again, you still couldn't take a photo of a spaceship or an alien. And, you know, you still couldn't take a, a picture of like a good Frank Frazetta barbarian fight, you know, because those things didn't exist. And people's ability to stage those photographs, the, the photographic sort of actual ability to do that was very, very poor. So it was good at taking, you know, a picture of soap, uh, you know, instead of or a picture of like food or something like that for your sort of catalogs, but not good for other things. But it does mean if you're in the business of drawing soap, then you are out of luck. And again, that is just another example of how, again, you have your skills and your skill set, and then you have the marketplace. The trick there is that, again, if you are someone who is just heavily relying on only doing the skills that are required of you for a particular marketplace, then it's very likely that you'll find that a technological innovation, again, like photography, will wipe you out. If you focus on your foundation and your own interests and you're willing to adjust where you actually apply your skills in the marketplace, you could easily find yourself coasting and drawing other things that did need to be created um, for other things that couldn't be photographed, uh, couldn't be photographed um, well into the future. It's all about understanding the difference between skill set, craft, and the market. So that really brings me to the second big point that I want to make, which is that marketing is really how most of the money is made um, on earth, right? This is how money is actually sort of exchanged hands is through marketing. And market is where you, it, it is the sort of the lubrication between the product and the marketplace. It's sort of advertising. It's how you sell your idea. And this has always been where the majority of, again, the value is actually created. And this is really where it, you have to understand that, again, you have your core skill set, which is you know, unrelated to how to make money. And your job is to sell that on the marketplace. And this is where, again, a lot of people would consider this today to be, you know, where you go on Instagram or, or whatever. And, you know, you kind of make a social media presence for yourself as an artist. Again, that will change constantly which platform you want to be on, what's valuable, where your sort of customer base is, what's going on. Again, that will change drastically depending on what market you want to be in. 
for instance, one of the things that I find is like, you know, Instagram and most social media has almost zero impact on the amount of money that I've made. I don't find any clients or anyone I work with, you know, really has come through anything else except ArtStation or my website. And again, that's just understanding the market and how I would market myself. And I think that's something that you can do as well. Where are the opportunities and how do you connect with them and how do you get to know them? This is also something that would fall under the purview of it's not what you know, it's who you know. Networking, being able to communicate with people and sell them your ideas is super important. It's not just important from, you know, like a sort of a boring sort of salesman sort of, you know, sort of, you know, that's always like a little bit sort of gross, right? You know, people sort of selling their, their ideas and, you know, sort of networking and all that stuff. I, I don't do a lot of that. It's really just about knowing that the way you get ideas out into the world is through convincing other people that they're a good idea. And that's a huge amount of what we actually do in the entertainment industry, right? That's what concept art is about. If you are trying to become a comic book artist, then actually pitching that idea, convincing a publisher that your idea is worthy of the market is actually the majority of the way that you make money. You can be a great comic book artist, you can be a great concept artist, or you can have a great idea for a game or something. If you can't convince the people with money that it's worth investing in to put the time into, then you'll never get to make it in the first place. And again, this is where I've struggled a lot with this over the years to kind of like figure out what is sort of going on there. But most of the time, again, I think what we want to do is have other people sort of recognize that we're amazing and awesome and so want to shower money and praise and sort of all good things onto us. And I think, uh, again, what I've sort of learned is that it's more a matter of you being confident in your own abilities, again, building that core skill set so that you believe in it, and then being able to communicate to other people that that is a great skill set, that you're worthy of them sort of employing you or working with you, and that your ideas are worthy. This is what concept art is. This is what most of entertainment design is. It was, we're sort of trying to convince people that this is a cool project, this is a cool idea within the team, we're often trying to convince people that, hey, let's go in this direction and not this direction. And again, that is really the bread and butter of not just kind of how all markets work, but it's how the sort of day-to-day -day running of a lot of visual design and sort of graphic-based images and industries work. You have to convince people that your ideas are really good. And if you can work on doing that, again, social media is a really good sort of proving ground for that. And that's where I think Instagram and those things are valuable. They kind of teach you how to do that, teach you how to get interest. Again, just don't confuse that with, again, getting jobs or whatever. But if you can figure out how to do this, it'll help out your career immensely. I think uh, reading and understanding books on advertising and marketing and sort of visual design and how to influence people is really good. Uh, again, it's often that, you know, what you have to do is work on the presentation of your ideas, the presentation of your website, the presentation of yourself, pitching yourself through your website, pitching yourself through all of the stuff that you put out to be something that is attractive to the particular market that you are trying to enter. Now, you'll notice that I haven't talked a lot about AI or AI art. And there's a good reason for this because you need to view a lot of these technological threats and disruptions through the framework that I've just mentioned in order to understand how you're going to change. Now, you can either change your skill set or you can change the market that you're attacking, or you can change your marketing, I guess, from a career standpoint. And again, I've sort of done that multiple times within my own career, again, moving from sort of comics to concept art. I've done illustration. And at the moment, again, I'm sort of doing comics again, right? So again, the skills that I have, the market I have, the opportunities that I have are all different. They're always in flux. There's no such thing as like a sort of a standard trajectory. Now, AI may change things in a number of different ways, and some of them could be good and some of them could be bad. And, uh, you know, either way, if you want to be an artist, you have to figure out how to navigate that system. It could be something really, really upsetting, like the end of, you know, um, art through photography 
And again, that doesn't mean the end of all art, but it does mean a lot of people are probably complaining at that time and getting really upset. Again, because they were just seeing themselves as having a job that is a production level job and production level jobs are always at risk of being replaced by things that has never changed and it will never change in the future. Most of the time what people do is they change their skill set to keep up with the current level of production. And that's a really, really good strategy until, again, AI potentially replaces so many people and so many things that, you know, there's not much left there as um, a skill set that you might need that's going to help the AI. But the main thing that I think I want to sort of share with you is just, again, a paradigm shift in your approach to Korea and art in general. I think that we still have a lot of latent gatekeeper validation sort of process to our you know, ideas of jobs and getting careers and all of those things. And this is really just to do with the disruption that something like the internet has had on everything. So I'll give you a few examples to try and sort of illustrate this point, because I know and I do apologize, I'm talking a lot of sort of abstract sort of language here, which uh, again, might be hard to sort of get your sort of teeth into. So really like something like the internet sort of solved the concept of distribution. Previously, distribution of materials and information was a really sort of important thing handled by big corporations. And the internet sort of solved that. Distribution is over, right? As a technological change, getting information out there and getting it to a large number of people is now really, really easy. And what I'd sort of say as a good example is even though that has changed everything, People are still looking for validation from traditional large organizations. And even if you look at the disruption that the internet has had on everything, a lot of people aren't actually taking advantage of the positives that it gives them um, and the things that are possible with it. So uh, again, you know, before that, if you wanted to get published, you needed to go to a publisher and you needed to go and get them to say, yes, you are worthy. You have, a, you can enter this gate. Um, I prove and I deem you worthy of publication. And there's a lot of value to that. But now what you have to understand is there's no one really telling you what to do. You can do whatever you want. But people still want the validation from someone and something. We're still in that modality of wanting a job. We want someone else to say, I pick you and now I'm going to give you money because I pick you. And I think that is one of the paradigms that probably... AI is going to push everyone over the edge a little bit with when it comes to career choice and your attitude towards everything. And again, it's not something new. It is just a continuation um, of the automation revolution that is happening. So for instance, I can you know, be a full-time working artist and I can also run this sort of little teaching sort of you know, YouTube channel and, and business I have you know, selling courses and stuff. And that's possible through automation. It's possible through services that allow me to kind of host courses, host YouTube, um, the technological innovation that's made it really easy to you know, edit videos and do these kind of things. And you know, that is something that's going to continue. It's going to become easier for you to make your own stuff and that is a major opportunity that a lot of people just aren't taking any advantage of uh, because again it's not something we're taught to do and it feels like that's the sort of job for you know big companies and people who are in business and that's kind of true but I think that it's going to become easier and easier and easier and it, AI is going to make it so freaking easy that you're going to probably want to do it as opposed to looking for a job elsewhere. So right now, again, if you want to get published, you can just put stuff on the internet and make it. And again, that's you making the product and putting it out there. Distribution is solved. The issue is, again, how do you make money from it? Most of the way that you do that, as we said, is through attacking a particular market and working on your marketing. So it's often marketing that people really struggle with as artists. Again, I can relate to that. It's very hard to market yourself as an artist. It's a different attitude. But, you know, I'll give you a couple examples where I kind of see this happening. For instance, uh, again, you know, I know a local sort of team of people make uh, video games. 
Um, uh, Ari Gibson and the people at Team Cherry made the game Hollow Knight, which is kind of quite popular. And that's just a room full of a couple of people, you know, making a game. And if it's really popular, you know, they, they do really well from it. And, you know, they don't need a big structure. They don't need a big company. A lot of those things have been automated. The distribution has been automated. The engines have been automated. You don't need someone to code a whole engine. Uh, you know, and a lot of the techniques there are very traditional. It's a lot of traditional sort of 2D animation, real sort of basic stuff, but people love it. And that's a good example of where, well, the technology is way advanced of what is possible, but still you can have a very, very small team, literally like a, a handful of people in just a standard little office in the middle of sort of Adelaide, Australia can create, you know, a really, really popular game. And I know a lot of other people who are doing that. Um, you know, people just making games and it's not just all people making games and kind of, you know, doing like a sort of an okay job of it. You know, people are finding quite, you know, good success doing that. And I think that is because there is an inflection point with the technology and the automation that, you know, all of these, you know, software as a service companies and all of these marketplaces provide. And um, yeah, I think that people right now aren't taking enough opportunity of that as it is. Once you have AI that will help automate a lot of those sort of uh, intermediary processes, I think that's where there's going to be a lot more opportunities come up for even smaller teams. So think less about AI as being something that's going to steal your job and more like something that's going to provide you the ability to run your own business easily. At the moment, you need to worry about a lot of technological junk a lot of sort of office work and boring things. Now, even though everyone is sort of very worried about AI art, I think that's because of one thing. It's visual and everyone can understand conceptually how automation and artificial intelligence or whatever you want to call Midjourney and DALI 2, etc. We can see it and everyone can see it. And everyone's like, oh, uh oh, I can see it. So I understand it. The same thing has been happening for a long time. But again, I don't think people have been understanding the degree to which these things are replacing people. They're not replacing artists. They're replacing middle management, business people, marketing people. You've got these marketplaces you can sell your games on. You can sell your books. You can sell your comics. You can sell your courses. All of these things are automated. There's uh, an algorithm that's going to probably not push this to that this video to that many people because I'm not saying like, oh, AI is the end of the world because that's what people seem to want to hear. But anyway, if you're still listening now, I really appreciate it. Um, you can treat this as our little secret for how to succeed. The point is that AI is going to make you being able to make your own thing really, really easy. It's going to replace a lot of these systems even better. So don't worry about, you know, a future where, again, someone is going to steal your job, um, you know, and you're not going to be have some production level job in one of these big AAA game studios. Most of the time, they're not very good anyway, right? You don't really want one of those jobs. They're not that fun half the time. Most of the people are miserable in those jobs. They want to be making their own games, right? So think about that, right? Like think about the possibilities that could happen. And if you properly understand the most basic level of what is occurring, you can probably take great advantage of it and come out in a really good position. Where I would like the future to go would be where I can say, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, can you make this comic that I created 10 years ago into a video game? Um, and again, that just happens. That would be cool. Again, I own the op I own the intellectual property to it. That might be possible. Oh, hey, you know, can you create a 3D model of my character here? Oh, it doesn't look quite good enough. You know, can you go look at, you know, this movie and this reference and maybe improve it a little bit? You yeah, know, that's good. Hey, turn on the webcam and look. I want this movement to be exactly like this. Again, at the point where AI is going to replace you as a friggin' job, it's going to be able to do a lot of things for you as a business owner, as a creator. Um, Siri, can you please color my comic for me? Okay, thank you. Let's frickin' go. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you've got comments, good or bad, or trolling. Anything's good. I really enjoy reading what everyone has to say about this, even though I don't always have the time to reply. But uh, anyway, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.